Hey, good morning. Um, it's been a while since I've posted a video. So, um, I'm doing that today. Got a few things to talk about. Um, but first, how's everybody doing uh, during quarantine? Um, as you can tell, well, you may not can tell, but um, I'm still having to work. I work at a car dealership, uh, and we're considered essential. So, I am still having to go to work. So, um, not a lot has changed for me. Um, only thing that me and my husband are missing is getting to go to a restaurant and sit down and eat. Because we, before all this happened, we didn't eat at home very often. We ate most of our meals out. So, we have gotten used to having to go to the grocery store and getting stuff to uh cook at home and have stuff at home to eat um, that's been the biggest change for us um, and then during our free time we like going to thrift stores and consignment stores and um, things of that state sales things like that we haven't got to do that in a while but that's not really a big deal our main thing is going out to eat <laughs> we are really missing that but um, let me know in the comments what uh, everybody else is doing during quarantine. If you're, if you um, are still working, if you're having to stay home from work, you're working from home, what you're doing to pass the time. Um, I know a lot of people are losing uh, track of what day it is because um, they're quarantined and aren't having to go to work and just can't get out and do anything, and which would be me. If I wasn't having to work, I probably would lose track of the day. I, I just had a, a three-day weekend, and I, it was I lose track of what day it is when I have those three-day weekends. So, um, anyway, um, be heading into work here in a few minutes myself. Um, but I'm gonna talk about. Um, the adoption thing so uh, it's been a few weeks now maybe going on a month um, we had gotten an uh, email about a little boy that we had inquired about sent our home study about and finally got an email asking if we were still interested in this little boy and we said yeah and then they finally uh, told us that we were chosen for this little boy and we were super excited about it um, then because of quarantine uh, you can't physically meet uh, with the team and discuss everything about him when the, they do their full disclosure and tells you everything about the child and his background and family and all this kind of stuff so we did a conference call with the team and uh, they told us everything about him. Um, we had a few questions, but uh, it seemed like from um, his uh, um, full disclosure that they uh, sent us really answered everything that we wanted to know. So um, uh, we told them in the conference call that we wanted to move forward uh, with uh, meeting him. And... Uh, they said, you know, right now, um, with quarantine, if it was just a foster child, that right now they're not to do any, any kind of meetings. But since it would be a permanent placement thing, that they could probably still work out having some face-to-face -face meetings uh, with him. And we were super excited about Um so we had let our adopt, adoption specialist know that we had been chosen for this kid and uh, she was excited about that. Um, had contacted the little boys team so she could get um, his uh, full disclosure. And uh, I guess a couple of days after that, she had contacted my husband and told um, told him that she had some red flags about it and um, that she had several questions that for us to ask the team 
and that she would also try to find out more about it herself. And there was like 12 questions and, and they were stuff that we didn't think about, didn't know about. And um, so we emailed the voice team about these questions and then finally they got back to us with the answers to the majority of the questions. And at the end, it was just, unfortunately, we were not, we decided against moving forward. Um, it was just a lot of things um, that uh, when he's been with previous uh, foster families, he was even um, in the process of being adopted by another family. And I guess that was going really well. And then just something happened with him and um, nothing that the foster family had done, but just something um, that the little boy um, just started doing and just acting out um, really violently. And, um, and just from what we found out that it's just something that happens with him all the time. He's totally fine for a few months and then all of a sudden something just sets him off. And we just, I mean, without getting into detail about it, um, it's just, it's not just your normal just acting out stuff. It was some serious, serious acting out. Uh, I mean, to the point of just being violent. And it's just not something we uh, figured we would be able to deal with and to handle. And it's unfortunate for the little boy and we really, really hated it because we were super excited about it. And um, and so we decided against um, adopting him. Uh, so, but I, now, I, I think it's going on two weeks now, we took in a, a foster, a 17-year-old boy, and... Um, and it's not fostering is not something we were wanting to do. Um, he's not even going to be a foster to adopt sort of thing. He, with him being seventeen, it he will probably be. Basically, it's just not going to happen for us adopting him. It's not. He's not in that uh, realm of things. It's just he is placed in state custody and he's in foster care and that's what we're doing with him um, and you know, we haven't fostered before and so we just thought you know let's just do it um, uh, we actually had met him uh, via another foster family with some other kids that they had um, we were going to be keeping uh, these three other foster kids that are siblings that um, this foster family had and they were going to be going on vacation and um, asked us if we would keep these three little kids um, that they were fostering for that week and we said yeah and um, we'll know if we'd like to meet them and get to know them a little bit before all that happened and we said yeah so we went to their house met them and the kid that we have now that we're fostering he was there also and um, so we didn't really talk to him there, but we met him. And so now we are fostering him. And um, it's been great. He's really respectful. Um, he's helpful. He's, you know, we don't have a lot of chores for him. We, there's just not really much around the house for him to do as far as chores. Um, he did mow the yard. Uh, he is going to start helping clean the pool. We just had our pool open, so he's going to start helping clean the pool. And then just basically keeping his room and his bathroom clean. Um, he's been really good about cleaning up after we cook, putting away dishes, uh, cleaning up the kitchen without even being told. He just does it. So um, that's good. It's only been, you know, not even two weeks yet. I'm sure things like that is going to change. Um, I say the longer he's with us and being a teenager that he's probably going to start saying what all he can get away with. Um, so we'll see how that works out, but we don't think it's going to be anything 
that we can't handle. We've been trying to watch for signs where we can, that he may be trying to see what he can uh, get away with and we're just quick to be like, you know, we, you know, we got, remember what, we talked about this. You, you remember we need to do this or we, we can't do that. We need to do this. So, um, so like I said, we're been trying to watch for those signs and just, um, kind of stop it before it does happen. Um, he has his driver's license, so he's been, um, we've been letting him drive, uh, not by himself yet. Um, he's been wanting to, he's been wanting to like go to the store for us and whatnot, but we're like, you know, we're at, not at that point yet. Um, and he's not on our insurance yet, so uh, we need to be in the car with him. And then plus, you know, he doesn't know the area that we live in. But so far, it's going really good with him. He's a good kid. Um, like I said, respectful. He's helpful. He's done. It does what he's told. Um, and like most teens, he likes playing video games. So he plays video games pretty much all day long and tries to play them all night long because the other night I had to get up. It was after 3 o'clock in the morning and he was still playing. I'm like, it's time to get off the game and go to bed. So, uh, and he did. He didn't hesitate. He was just, okay. Um, and he got off and went to bed. Um, so, but we decided to, to take him in as a foster because, you know, it's, we figured we need to just do it just to get the feel of what it's like to have um, a young person living in our home with us on a day-to-day -day basis, how things are going to change, how we're going to interact with um, with a kid and um, just get used to that. And so far, so good. And um, hopefully that's not going to change. Um, as everyone knows, uh, kids aren't in school right now. I know here where I live, they have online classes that they, it's, they don't have to take these classes. They just recommend um, students take these online classes and which with my husband being a professor at a university, he is big into that kind of stuff. So um, our foster kid has been doing his online classes. He's a super smart kid. So he's been going right through stuff really quickly. Uh, this week, today, he is starting ACT prep. Uh, so he'll be working on that when he gets up. And um, that's it. Um, that's what's been going on with our lives. Um, so like I said, not a lot has changed for me because I still have to go to work. But with Tommy being a professor, he's obviously not been going to work. And uh, we have a foster kid right now. And, um, but so ready for things to get back to normal. Um, we are just wanting to go to a restaurant, sit down, get waited on, eat food at the restaurant, not take takeout. It's just not the same when you do takeout and you get that stuff home. It's just not as good as it would be if you were sitting there at the restaurant. And it seems like it's more expensive to do takeout. I don't know if maybe prices, the prices are a little higher because they're trying to make up a little bit of revenue from them not being open because they don't have as much business as they would have if they were open. But it just seems like it's just more expensive to uh, do takeout at some places. Um, and there are some places that's been having some pretty good uh, deals and those haven't been bad. But um, it's just, it'd be great to, when we get back to normal and be able to go to restaurants, go get haircuts and just uh, get out and do stuff. But it is about time for me to go into work. Um, thanks for listening to me and hope everyone has a great day and everyone is safe uh, during these crazy times. And like I said, hit me up in the comments let me know what you guys are doing during quarantine if you're working 
you're not working, what you're doing to, to pass the time. And um, talk to everyone in the next video. Who knows? It may be a, very soon or it may be a while. Um, so you would think I'd probably make a more video since I have a little more time on my hands. Even though I really don't, I still have to work. But that's what's going on with with the making family right now. So again, thanks for listening. Everybody have a great day. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, and see you guys next time.